sounded like an obituary, I gotta say. Like, for a minute, I'm like, does he know I'm right over there? I am not dead yet? That was definitely obituary, like. All right, let me just get set up. Uh, you know, when they first told me this subject was gonna be weird, I said, you know what would be really weird? If I just, like, got a massage table, and asked somebody to come up from the audience, and then just gave a massage for like 40 minutes. That would be weird. Um, but I, I didn't think anybody would volunteer, right? Who's gonna volunteer to get a massage in front of 165 people? So that idea went out the window. And then I said, you know, I could just buy like one of those like $9 magic kits and just pretend I got it wrong. And, or I could just talk about Bob Weir for an hour and figure I just misread it. If you guys know who Bob Weir is, that's funny. All right, so I gotta get my slide cheat sheet out here. And let me make sure I understand. So to the right is forward, to the left is back. Is that true? Yes. Let's assume, yes. So, anyway, I have to thank everybody for coming out in the morning because number one, how many of you guys are morning people? Okay, it's eight of you, exactly. So, I mean, why show up in the morning? But, so I appreciate that. And then when I found out there was free food and free coffee, then I figured, all right, now I get it. It's like, you know, it's like that. Um, and so I'm gonna like get everything prepared, and then we're gonna do some questions, and I'm gonna go through some slides. And I love that when they sent me this, they said a slide is worth a thousand words, and I said, yes. I'm just gonna show a bunch of slides and sit here like an idiot. Uh, not true. So, um, you know, I asked for more Q&A time because, you know, when I'm in the audience watching somebody, the last thing I want to hear somebody do is just like pontificate like an asshole. And I was like, that's why I wanted more Q&A time. So hopefully there'll be less pontificating like an asshole and more Q&A time. Um, and then, you know, also, how many people have been to Creative Mornings before? Holy cow. That's awesome. Um, and let's see, how many people have been to one of my restaurants? Wow, all right. And is there anybody in the restaurant business here? Okay, well I will not talk about the hospitality and the crazy world that we live in in terms of the restaurant business. I will talk about weird design. So, let's see, where am I going here? I just have, oh, then the next question is, how many people came to just hear me say a bunch of fucked up shit? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, okay, so, the funny thing about weird is, and I'm going to get off of weird in a minute, because we're going to be talking about weird the whole day. Weird is like the kind of thing, do you ever hear somebody say like, oh my god, I'm so weird. And you're like, no you're not. You can't say you're weird. Somebody else has to say you're weird. Because the antonym to weird is normal. And so, then it made me thinking, so if I'm talking about weird, that means I am a long way away from normal. I just happened to look it up and just find out that the antonym is actually normal. Um, but in terms of weird design, that's what I assume they want to be here for, not just because, I'm, oh my god, I'm so weird. Um, design and weirdness is great. And there's definitely a very interesting process. Oh shit, there's people up there. God damn it, I gotta start making eye contact. So, um, so, I'm so sorry. You too. Sorry. Um, so, there's a process of going down the rabbit hole. And luck, you know, after you go down this rabbit hole of weird design for so long, it's like, you know, what I hear is like taking acid, going down the rabbit hole, and all of a sudden I'm Alice. And I'm going into this world, because in order to design weird, you have to find weird. And in order to like get a lot of this crap, you have to really scour people's bedrooms, garage, basements, attics, storage units, um, you know, sex dens, anything you can imagine you have to scour. And one of the things is that this building you're in now has such a rich history that um, he didn't mention, RJ didn't mention, which is this used to be a brothel, this used to be a um, uh, adult video library, uh, a peep show, uh, just nefarious men's masturbating laboratory for 50 years. <laughs> I doubt any women came in here. 
So I had to deal with that in designing the place. And short of having like a bukkake session, there's a better way to design, because that's not going to be a cool way to design. So I started to look like down this rabbit hole. And when you go down the rabbit hole, especially when you look for things associated with sex, because you can see there's posters about softcore porn, there's nods to the beautiful history of the building. And in and doing that, you have to be ready for anything goes. So with that, I'm going to start a little bit about how that process works. So uh, let's see if I get this right. Okay, I don't see that it's way behind here. Okay, so that's me. Great, we're done there. Okay. This is not where I live. Okay, a lot of people think the first thing when I get interviewed is, oh, cool, you got, you, you're kind of like a hoarder, aren't you? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not a hoarder. Just because I have 10,000 radios, 30,000 Jaeger bottles, you know, 400 steel dildos, like, no, that's not a hoarder. That's just an opportunist. Okay, so that's not where I live. That is not me. Contrary to popular belief, when people see all this stuff, they say, that must be the God right there, and how he lives. Um, it does make life a little challenging to bring this stuff in, and most of it needs to be frankly washed before you bring it home. Uh, even the like innocuous stuff needs to be washed. But um, this is not me. Okay. So, some radios. Um, you know, to me the goal is find something that maybe is worthless. Okay, so all these radios are broken. And I went to a yard sale, and there was a guy who was very much emotionally attached to these radios, so much so that I think he quoted me like $6,000 for those radios. And that was on Friday. And then I came back on Sunday, and there was, I think, the same amount of radios. Believe it or not, nobody bought that bunch of broken radios for $6,000. So then on Sunday, they were $300. Great, I'm the man to take you know, garbage cans full of radios and do something with it. I sat on these radios for a long time, right? They just sat there in garbage cans and, you know, we move them from storage unit to storage unit. But the goal when you get a bunch of radios like that is you turn it into this. So that's actually behind me and it's not open. But that's the goal. You get radios and you get something that's maybe meant for the garbage can. And really, 10 years ago, if somebody gave me those radios like that, I would immediately say, thank you very much, wait till they left, and throw them in the dumpster. But now, now there's an opportunity there. And the opportunity is, how do you make sense out of the chaos? How do you, you know, put something together, especially when like, you know, the theme might not be radios, granted it's music here, so it fits here, but oftentimes there's no theme to follow. The theme to follow is like an intentional misalignment of ideas. And that to me is like the coolest part of it, is just finding things that don't go together, shouldn't go together, and force them to go together. And the best way I know to explain that is by making things feel a certain way. Because on their own, that's just a bunch of radios, but put them on a wall, you know, arrange them with some sense of, of you know, line linearity and depth and lines and all the bullshit speak, and then you get like a cool feeling, you know, maybe even a red light on it, and then boom, you have a cool radio wall, which is right behind me. And I just gotta look at the next slide. But oftentimes, that is what I, that's one of my storage units, for example. And like, how do you make sense out of that? Well, that's a great question. I think that shelf is still looking like that five years later. We took that picture five years ago, and I thought, wow, that's really funny. That shelf still looks like that. So you have to be okay with a certain amount of byproduct, you know? Like, you, you cast a big net, and unfortunately, you're gonna get some dolphins, and that's like my dolphins, right? Um, and sometimes you get a mermaid, and you're like, shit, I don't need mermaids. I just need lots and lots of tuna. So that is the result of casting a big net in design, is that you need a place to store some of the tuna and, I'm sorry, some of the dolphins and mermaids. One day I hope to use those dolphins and mermaids, but right now they're in my storage unit. What usually ends up happening, it's like sort of the things I get in bulk, the sardines, I like this analogy thing, the sardines, the, you know, the tuna, what else goes in big, you know, I don't know, flying fish. It's about getting a lot of one thing to me, and I, again, I don't even know if this is what you want to hear, but I'm just going with it, so. Um, the other cool thing is like when you, like when 
this building, I, when I leased it, I came in, and um, a funny story, there was these booths, and in each booth was a little glass window, and behind each little glass window was a bed. Okay, so you know what's going on there. But I came here with you know, one of my top people, and we're looking around, we're like, wow, this is, yeah, this is gross and disgusting and depressing, but the building's really cool. And then the person I was with um, looked below the window. So imagine the window is here, and then she saw the something here, and she says, oh my God, that's so gross. Everybody puts their feet up right there. So if you know where we're going, it's happened to be where feet might go, but men do things that go a certain way when you're looking through a window at certain things, and that big spot was not people's feet going up against the wall. So that was what I thought was a funny story. So anyway, <laughs> hence they asked me to do weird, right? The silence was like, uh, we're just here to see weird. I have to be weird. Okay, so... Like, that was one of the cool things that was in one of those rooms. And the cool thing at, my, at the time, my daughter, who at the time was like five years old, the first thing she asked me when she came into this building when it was emptied out is, Dad, look at this cool sign. Toys, lotions, and potions. Like, like that connects, the sick thing about that sign is it connects with a five-year-old perfectly well. But it also connects with like a 40-year-old really well, too. So that's what's the beauty of that sign is toys, lotions, and potions. Like, what kid wouldn't come to a place called Toys, Lotions, and Potions? What sick 40-year-old man wouldn't go to a place called Toys, Lotions, and Potions? What sick person wouldn't do that together? So anyway, that's one of the things that was in this building. So of course you have to save that because that's like, that's like mining gold right there. You get something like that in a building, you know, you might think, wow, this is like a really cheap plastic sign that's filthy. Um, but I see it for a number of other reasons, and most of it is just an opportunity. And the other thing, I, I guess I have to show a picture, since I mentioned the... Oh, that was backwards, hold on. The, you know, defunct steel dildos that were in here. I don't think they sold one of them, and I can understand why. It's like a whole box of that for women doesn't seem like a very attractive thing, but that was in the building. <laughs> it's a steely Dan, yes. Well said. Um, so, but the weirdest thing I found in this building when I came here was by far this. Okay, so, but that is an opportunity. That's what I'm saying. Like, you look at this and you're like, oh my God, call the police. You know, get the hazmat scene. Call CFI and let's get the fuck out of here. But... You can't, because that's like, again, gold. And I think she's in our window right now. If you saw the weird woman with a ball gag in her mouth and you know, the thing over her head and a bunch of you know, classy vibrators, and they are, they're from the 60s, that's how you find that. You find this and you say, don't throw that out. Because you know, everyone's ready to throw that out, spray it down, and um, sorry, someone is texting me from work and I just have to tell them to call somebody else. This is weird. This is why they hired me. They know my filter's broken. And yes, I will pull this out right in the middle of the thing and say, leave me alone. I'm getting down. Um, so, <laughs> that's, you know, the canned answers? That's one of my canned answers. I just send that all the time. People are like, yeah, okay, sorry, dude. Rock on. Now, most of the time I get like the, the cool, like, or, the, or that one, yeah. Okay. So, let's see the next slide. All right, so, I gotta pause. Okay, so that's, that's all well and good. That's things you see and you find and you try and make sense of them. But there's only so many times you walk into a cool building and you find that kind of stuff. Most of it has been taken by other people, thrown away by people who don't know what they're throwing out. And so you have to go down the rabbit hole. And the rabbit hole is a couple things. The rabbit hole, first of all, is what I call like the 1998 New York machine. Do you guys know what that is? That's the internet. Because in 1998, New York was basically the internet. And now that the internet exists, New York is, who, know, who even knows where New York is? I kind of feel like the Midwest is, when I was in New York, I didn't know where it was. Midwesters don't know where New York is, because you don't need to, because the internet exists. So one of the places going down the rabbit hole is Craigslist. And yeah, so Craigslist is just, I don't know, have you guys been on that? Like, have you seen what was on there? Can you believe that that shit is legal? You know, that there's not like some 
secret password and some secret organization to get into. Uh, anyway, now I'm just doing a time check. I'm making sure I'm not pontificating. I'm getting close. So anyway, you go to Craigslist and you look at lots and lots of stuff. This is sometimes, well, these are some of the things that I've seen. This is what I found by accident. I was not looking for this man. I was just like typing in. So the art of this whole thing is you type in random words because a random word can lead you down to who knows where. So I typed in something here and it wasn't man with phallic keyboard. None of those words were in there. But that's what I got. So you have to like know you're going into a place where you don't want to be, but there's nowhere else to do this. So I don't know what that's akin to other than some weird sexual fetish and what better place than Craigslist. So that is a real thing. Um, this next one is a real thing. Like, there is no humor in this. This isn't an ironic Craigslist ad. This is a man selling a table who, whose wife or roommate said, dude, you know what? You'll probably sell it so much quicker if you take off your clothes and lie there and smile. Because that's, there's nothing weird about that. So, I bought that table. No, I, I didn't. That's, see, that is way weirder to me than all the other shit you just saw. Dismembered bodies and steel, steely dan dildos, all that. That's much weirder to me. There's something really sad about humanity that lies in that man's face. I don't know if he knows that, but there is something really sad. Could you come on down, please? Thank you. Mr. Table Craigslist Man. Alright, so let me see what's next so I make sure I'm keeping... Oh, here's another one. This one I found online by looking for something because my father... This is how genius my father is, and this will tell you probably where my, who my father is. He, um, he, he does a lot of things that just are kind of like get-rich-quick things. He's really into like, you know, finding that thing to get rich. And he, he put an ad in the Inquirer once for Rugola, right? So the whitest, most Christian you know, newspaper, inquirer, not Christian, but you know what I mean, like, just not Jewish. is a Jewish thing. My father put a recipe for Rugula in there. He got two people to send a dollar fifteen, and he probably spent like $5,000 on the ad. Anyway, my father then said, he did this pose, and he, and he sold autographed air guitar headshots, and so I thought that was just genius, so it led me to, like, yeah. That, that exists. Somebody was so... I think they saw my father's idea, frankly. Because that is brilliant. Like, God, I pushed the bidding on that so high. It just got out of my price range at some point, because who wouldn't want an air, autograph air guitar? I think my father, to this day, is still kicking himself that he didn't do this. Because in his, you had to buy a picture of him doing this. And that wasn't so popular. All right. So you have to go down the rabbit hole. You have to find things. And you have to be ready for things like that. Um, and so the next thing I have, uh, are we good on time? RJ, are you here? You're good. We're good? I got like 10 more minutes? Yep. Okay. So the next one's going to require you to read. And this is me just taking a chance. Is it okay? Are you guys into reading? Has everybody got the stuff out of their eyes and coffee pumping through the blood? Um, so anyway, this is something I, I wanted to tell you guys it was me calling. Because anybody who knows me in work, they call me Black Jesus. And they call me that because... I probably do a lot of things that Afro-American people do, which is like, really, I have like a 69 Lincoln. I, I just, my, my mom's black, so it's like I really have this like wannabe heritage. So I want to tell you guys this is me. So I'm going to give you guys a minute or two to read this hilarious exchange. Just take a minute. I'm going to drink some water. Oh. <laughs>
So that's to me like the beauty of like Craigslist and fucking with people, you know, like selling a microwave, whites only. Um, that's the kind of stuff I look for right there. That's like just makes my day to find something like that. I usually find that at two in the morning. I usually literally LOL. Do you know what people LOL? They're not LOLing. I literally LOL when I find something like this. And I heard a couple of LOLs here. So that's like just the beauty of Craigslist. That's what you have to be open for. And my God, are we even talking about design? No, no matter. I want to go through a couple other things about going down the rabbit hole, because I'll answer any questions about design in a few minutes, but this is my fucking time. So the other thing you have to be ready for is just more websites. You know, sometimes you type in a search engine, um, you know, religious artifacts. If you guys know Linger, it used to be a mortuary. I look for religious artifacts. The first one or two, you can guess what they sell, religious artifacts, crosses, holy oil, and sure, I found some cool shit on there. But if you go to the second page on Google, you sometimes get to hear. I don't even know what this is, and I don't even know what they're selling. But that's what you get when you search for stuff for Linger. Um, but I took a screenshot because I'm like, well, I got here. I might as well just appreciate the view. You know, it's like you drive, you're lost, and you're like, well, I'm fucking lost. Might as well just check it out in camp. So speaking of being lost and making a picnic out of it, um, here's another one. So the next couple websites are just ones that humor me. I hope they're funny. Um, there's this. Somebody has a website called, I don't know why, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, the crime number shitting bear. <laughs> So the question is, what was I looking for? I don't remember. There was no bear and there was no shit. Maybe something with prime numbers. Maybe calculators. I think I was looking for like old calculators. Vintage calculators. Vintage calculus calculators. Go down to the third thing. This is what you'll find. But what's more interesting is that this is a thing. Somebody made this website. Somebody intentionally, not with a gun to their head, not trapped in the, the basement of the Taliban. The, they did this because they wanted to. Here's another man um, that did a website. <laughs> this is real. This is not made up. <laughs> so, what is he selling for this? Please believe me, everything you read is true and is important. Now, people do not have to age anymore. The weird thing, I am 84 years old. You're laughing at that man? I found that 40 years ago. I'm now 84. So, I'm really here to talk about eugenics, okay? Can we open the curtain to my vitamins, please? So, okay, that shit crazy, okay. Then, I was looking for, what was I looking for? Oh, I gotta look at my cheat sheet. So here I was looking for, I think I just typed in crazy as fuck, just to see what came up. And somebody pegged this guy crazy as fuck. Okay, I see the resemblance, so I don't know what they're talking about. Like, I see the guy on the left who's a regular citizen, and the guy on the right, Obama. I see Obama on the right really looks like the guy on the left. It's funny. I see it. So that's crazy as fuck. Um, and then a couple other random, like, there's actually a website that, because um, I opened Root Down DIA, so you know I was searching for airplane things, and I found a website that shows every plane in the air at that moment. And that's it. So if you want to know where every plane is at that moment in time, go on this website that I put up there. Maybe that, some of them I put up there. There is a website called OMFG Dog, so oh my fucking god, dog. I think they were um, dyslexic and they meant something else, but uh, which would be something God. What would GMFO be? I don't know. So, anyway, that's OMFG Dog. Um, then again, I typed in something really silly and found this, which is read the website up there. Can somebody read that website? Because I can't see it. It's pew pew pew. pew. Uh, <laughs> Pew 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 squirrel gun or something. So you gotta type in pew 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 like a gun shooting. And this squirrel you can move with your mouse and it shoots. Why is that like amazing? I don't know. 
<laughs> so anyway, I'll send anybody who wants these websites, I'll send them to you. So that's, that's pew 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 squirrel gun uh, Another one, I found this years ago, really, and I played with this one with my daughter. It's booba, but I just, I, you get out there and you put your mouse over things and everything that is glorious in heaven and earth happens on this website. It just, you leave feeling good. I would imagine if you, you know, skin the dog alive and then went to this website, you would leave feeling so good about yourself. There's something, I'm, I'm telling you, the music is so, you guys gotta go on this website. Anyway, this is one of the one, this is called, this is called when you fall asleep on the keyboard, Dot com, and I'll tell you why that's why it's called. Okay. <laughs> so that is called, that website is, let me see if I can remember, 111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111
like, oh, you made that coochie. Got it. So it's funny having a last name like coochie because you, you get things like that. And anytime I call a government agency, forgive me if this is a stereotype, but every time I call a government agency, passport, motor vehicles, what may be it, they say, hi, sir, um, let me look up your, your case. What's your name? Justin Coochie. This is what I hear on the other end. <laughs> Right, Mr. Cookie. <laughs> because in government agencies, apparently my name, my last name is very funny. Like, I've had a woman laugh the whole, she kept like rethinking of having the last name Coochie and what your life must be like. <laughs> so anyway. Thank you.